Four and a half months ago, I made a video proclaiming it was a great time to be a fan of the original 007 Goldeneye, as there was a version coming to Nintendo Switch with online support, and a version coming to Xbox Game Pass with dual analog stick support, native 4K resolution, integrated cheat modes, and more usable out-of-the-box controls. Both versions are savagely lacking, and unfortunately, I do believe Nintendo and Microsoft simply did Goldeneye a little dirty. And like I mentioned during my Gran Turismo 7 review, heaps of nostalgia simply isn't enough when there's issues at hand. Throughout this video, you're going to see two delicious pieces of B-roll actual gameplay footage of me playing 007 Goldeneye captured directly on the Xbox Series X, and an unboxing of a pretty darn good condition Goldeneye 007 cartridge. I will say it is a more enjoyable experience emulating this game on PC, or a step down from that would be playing this Game Pass and Switch version, and then down here is the inconvenience of playing the native version, which I've talked about the N64 controller, uh, two of them actually, over my noggin. One is uh, Pokemon, of course. Gotta catch them all. That's how I treat controllers. Some of y'all do that with STDs. I do it with uh, controllers. In my opinion, the definitive version is going to be on Xbox because the only online support is on Switch, but it's going to be one of those experiences you play one or two matches with your buddies and then you're like, what? That was uh, pretty difficult to control. Um, that was an experience. Very strong, sticky aim assist, taking it back to the 90s. And you're able to not cheat by staring over at your buddy's screen because it is indeed a four player split screen. But there really is no replayability there or reason to play the multiplayer more than a couple of matches. Not to mention you are of course limited by the Nintendo Switch's lack of processing power with that Tegra processor and the resolution cap of the Switch 720p in handheld mode and 1080p docked. Not to mention aiming with the stock Joy-Cons is pure and utter trash. Granted, if you're playing a docked experience, you're probably using a Switch Pro controller. But if you are playing on the go, I strongly do recommend picking up an aftermarket pair of Joy-Cons, something a little bit bigger, more sculpted and ergonomic and actual usable analog sticks, thumbsticks that are larger, have smaller dead zones, more travel, maybe some anti-friction rings around the outside of the thumbstick gates. There's a pair linked in the description below that I have reviewed, strongly stand behind. I recommend that if you're playing any first-person shooters on your Switch on the go, so the Bioshock trilogy, the Borderlands trilogy, the stock Joy-Cons are so short on the analog sticks. It, yeah, good luck with aiming. But neither Microsoft or Nintendo did any kind of work when it comes to revamping this game for modern functionality such as new accessibility features. Or here's the one that I immediately noticed. They're still using the traditional pause menu where James pops up his watch. And that's great. We're staying true to the native content here. I'm all for that. But my brain simply melted a couple times just trying to navigate the watch menu. I was like, what? Is it the left stick? Is it the right niblet? Is it the D-pad? Eventually, I figured it out. But it's one of those things a simple modernized facelift would have gone a long way. Obviously, keep the game mechanics the same, keep the story the same, voice clips the same, all that stuff. But maybe a goddamn pause menu that's more navigatable? Is that a real word? It is now. Navigation expert here. Grab you by the helm <laughs> and spin you around. In my opinion, unless you want that on-the-go experience playing Goldeneye or you just need to have that nostalgia trip of staring at your buddy's screen and then claiming that you killed him, you just knew he was going to hit the corner so you were pre-firing. Other than playing a couple matches of the multiplayer, which is only available on the Switch version. Other than those two use case scenarios, I would say you can completely skip over the Switch version. I just don't even recommend picking it up unless you already have NSO and the expansion pack, which is what you need to have access to this game. Of course, if you're already subscribed, go ahead and install it. Same thing on the Microsoft side of the house. It was on Game Pass. That's how I played it on the Series S and X. As for performance, it is 16 by 9 aspect ratio 4K resolution, and it played pretty darn smooth. There were a couple of stutters or frame rate dips, but for the most part, when I hit my little screen overlay on my LG TV, the FPS was fluctuating between 116 and 118 FPS. I did see an article from Kutaku from a few days ago saying the game was locked on Game Pass to 30 FPS. However, that did not correlate with my testing, not on my frame rate counter, nor my eyeballs. I know what 30 frames per second looks like. I know what 60 frames per second looks like, 120. It was not 30 frames per second, clearly. So I don't know what that article is referring to. But the control scheme is automatically laid out, more accustomed to what you're used to with modern FPSs. You have dual analog stick support. There is no jump, but there is crouch that was already bound to be on Xbox. And there is thumbstick dead zone and sensitivity adjustment. It's not per stick. It's linked for left and right. But I was just glad to see that peer 
period. But other than that feature, there really is no modernized accessibility, controller options, gameplay tweaks for potentially disabled gamers, stuff like that. This isn't going to be a typical game review where I break down soundtrack and audio design and things like that. This game came out in 1997. You've probably seen or heard or read a review of it by now. And Nintendo and Microsoft didn't really tweak the core game files much. They just cranked up the resolution on the Microsoft side of the house. Better control scheme. It's integrated on Game Pass. And my final sentiment, it definitely seems like if both of these games could be integrated into one because they each have a cool aspect. The Switch version has online multiplayer and the Xbox version has a 4K resolution, dual analog stick support, and runs smoother and better. So if we could mix the two, basically just take the online support from the Switch version and then kick that to the curb, put that on the Xbox version, then we'd have a more complete package over here. But even still, I really hate to say it, but this game really hasn't aged well. There are other first person shooters that I would say have aged slightly better, even from the N64 era. Perfect Dark looks a little bit better. It's one of those titles you're going to play on Game Pass, probably a whole playthrough start to finish if you had this as a child, just for the nostalgia factor. But then after that, the cartridge is going to collect dust. No cartridge, it's all digital now, but you get it. It's going to sit on the library collecting the residue off. Residue. It's going to do it to it. Thank you for listening to my thoughts on Goldeneye for the Switch and Xbox series. Drop in the comment section below your thoughts because I genuinely do want to hear them. Get a little conversation going on down there and I'll see you stallions and stallionettes tomorrow. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach in a system as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below. To get in touch with myself and the stallions and stallionettes of gamer heaven join the community discord and check me out at twitch.tv where i go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my ph balance is on point just kidding starting june i'm going to be live streaming a lot thanks for watching this has been ak40 kevin hosting gamer heaven and i'll see you tomorrow because i upload daily all the time 60 percent of the time sometimes most of the time peace